One and a half week ago, I decided to leave my life in London behind and go to Bali to ignite a spiritual awakening. Why well, I believe that it is important to step away from society because it is so easy to fall into these traps of escapism. And if we keep doing that, we keep doing that, we keep accumulating trauma and negative emotions and we can never fully be free. We can never fully live from peace and calmness. And I think what it means to spiritually awaken is not that you won't have all of these negative emotions anymore. Your natural baseline will be higher. So it doesn't mean that you can still not feel the lower emotions, but they just flow through you. You fully feel them and you're able to immediately let them go. Not live from the ego is not being preoccupied in your mind anymore when you are in public spaces by caring what other people think. Also stop judging others. When you seek validation from others about your work or about the way you look, or when you constantly feel like you need to validate others, give them compliments to make them feel better. Any form of judgment, any worry about the past is the ego because you're holding on to a story about the past. Why we do this is because the emotion is never truly felt, never truly let out. Rather, we seek escapism, forms of pleasure, when do we actually sit down and go within and really do the work? Constantly return to the beauty and simpleness of life, here in the present moment. You don't need to do anything, all is perfect. When thoughts have consumed you for a bit, you again go back to the objectiveness of it. Also, do you like the narrative that is going on in your brain? Catch the mind on bad, unproductive narratives. Adjust, rewrite, steer the mind, experience emotions. Don't ignore them. Don't distract yourself. You can become high consciousness in any instant. When I don't let my triggers dictate my behavior and state of being, I simply accept and surrender. Enjoy. Soften. Welcome to week two of my spiritual awakening journey. I want to talk about, first of all, the things that I've done to cultivate more awareness now that I'm here in Bali. And... Secondly, share some of my deepest, most important insights that I've gained in this week. This is where I'm currently filming. Absolutely magical. I also want to start off by first clarifying what it means to be fully spiritual awake. For the longest, I thought I was spiritually awake. That is just because maybe during meditation or some practices, yoga, I was experiencing deep moments of awareness and not identifying with the mind anymore. Now that is not being spiritually awake because once you're actually spiritually awake, let's say enlightened, that is a permanent state of being that you can't come back from. And whether it is even achievable to be enlightened, that is the question. There are literally only very few people on this earth that are fully spiritually awake and enlightened. And maybe that shouldn't even be the goal. The goal is just to become more aware and more spiritually awake. Now, I was already relatively very spiritually awake compared to everyone in my surrounding that I had in, in the city. But if you still have moments where thoughts can control you, very negative thoughts, or if you still experience phases of depression and negative emotions that you can't get out of, you are not fully spiritually awake. You are not fully living in awareness because what it actually means to live in awareness let's say on the frequency chart of emotions you are near the frequency of enlightenment you don't identify with any negative emotions anymore you are literally able to experience emotions as they come and immediately let them go plus you don't carry any stories about yourself with you no no identification so a lot of our stories are based on our past, right? For example, I have been in a toxic relationship and that, that is why I struggle to trust people. That is a story. But even I am doing a PhD is a story. It is a form of identification. And when we have attachment to that identification and we put our self-worth on that, we are still living very much from the ego. So living in awareness and being spiritually awake, what it truly means is to release the ego and relieve judgment about yourself and about others and stop identifying with the story, stop living in the past and stop living in the future. That is another important part of awareness. And if you've experienced brief moments of this, which I did when I was living in London, it doesn't mean you're spiritually awake because being fully spiritually awake means 
this becomes a permanent state of being. The city just wasn't making me happy. The environment, everyone around me being in their ego wasn't aligning with what I felt was my true need and purpose, which is to evolve and grow more into awareness so that I can be more at peace and actually use that to then actually help people. And that is what I'm doing. That is why I decided to leave everything behind and come here so that I can get to a very stable place of awareness, not fluctuate, not in and out, sometimes aware, sometimes very in a low mood, sometimes overwhelmed by anxiety, not that fluctuation, which is probably what a lot of people are experiencing and thinking they are spiritually aware just because they had brief moments of awareness. I'll walk you a little bit through what I have done this week in order to increase my levels of awareness, first of all, and then secondly, my main important realizations. A part of me thinks it is impossible to become fully spiritually awake when you're living in a city. It is just the environment and the energies are not allowing it, right? And you are probably still surrounding yourself with, with a lot of people that are living from their ego. It is impossible to become fully spiritually awake in that environment. At least it was for me. And I think that must go for a lot of people. So if you ever have the opportunity to go somewhere else, to travel to spiritual places in Bali or in India or wherever it is, I think that is highly recommended because it also sort of takes you out of your normal environment and allows you to really take the time to do the inner work. Now, what has this inner work looked like for me? Four things I've been doing very consistently that are facilitating this awakening. First thing is meditation. I meditate every day for at least an hour sometimes twice a day, in the morning and at night, because this is actually practicing what it means to live in awareness. Because as you are meditating, there are a lot of thoughts that might come up. And what you practice with the meditation is to not act on those thoughts and let them float off. And there are different forms of meditation that you can do. You can just sit in a cross-legged position and focus on your third eye and try to keep your awareness there. Or you can sit and go through your chakras, focus energy and attention on there, focus your breath on all of your chakras to sort of imagine that you're cleansing them with your breath. Or just sit there and practice with the fact that whenever a thought comes up, you let it float off again. Now, honestly, an hour of meditation sounds long, but it is too short. I prefer, at this point in my life, I prefer to be in meditation than anywhere else because it reconnects me to my inner being to my highest self and we all have a highest self that is truly what awareness and spiritual awakening is about is connecting with your soul again your higher self and the way to practice this is in meditation second thing that i do every day is i do a practice of yoga this is another form to tap into awareness it is a form to get yourself force yourself to be in the present moment and this is also when you're in a present moment you are often in awareness you are living from your soul that is when you are able to enjoy things or look at even gratefulness able to enjoy the present moment whenever we are worrying about the past or just thinking about the past in general or we're planning for the future we are in our ego always that is the ego the ego wants to control the ego identifies with past stories the ego attaches to emotions and stories wants to clench onto it and there are so many thought loops in our mind our mind is the ego right our conscious brain is the ego there are so many loops in our conscious brain thought loops that just are playing on repeat and once we become aware of these, we realize, is this actually the record that I want to keep playing? And, you know, meditation and yoga are very useful practices to get out of the records that are playing. And you have to be in the present moment, especially with yoga. The pain of a stretch just immediately gets you into the present moment. And another benefit of yoga is that... A lot of our emotions are stored in our muscle tissue. So stretching them out is actually a very artificial, physical way to release those emotions. Third thing that I've done is I've done a conscious transmission. So this is a very 
interesting ritual with uh, a person that is qualified to do this, a guru or someone that has been taught by a guru, what this conscious transmission is about. So this was a session that I did with someone here. What happens during the conscious transmission is that that person helps you go through your chakras and tries to see if there are any entities or energies that want to leave that can be cleared. Now, in my session, it turned out that I had a lot of trauma or negative energy stored in my sacral chakra that I really wanted to leave. So he helped me release that energy, something that I might have not been able to do by myself. And you have to imagine that these negative energies that you're carrying with you can still manifest specific thought spirals. So releasing them is releasing um, a specific thought spiral that you might have been carrying with you for years based on trauma. These things form to protect you, right? These thought loops and energies clench on because it is like a protection mechanism. You go through something traumatic and then the ego is like, okay, wow, this was traumatic. We don't want to go through this again. Let's create this entity. Let's create this energy that we keep with this human so that we have specific thoughts that are about this trauma that keep iterating in order to prevent this from happening again, in order to protect you. But a lot of the times these energies are not surfing us anymore and we can't sort of move on and get to higher frequencies of awareness if we keep these energies with us. So that was one thing that he helped me do. And then the second thing is actually do a conscious transmission. So it is like he helps bring universal energy of awareness into my system through my crown chakra, imagining it like a golden light floating entering my body and oh my god it was so magical it was the first time in my life where my mind just completely shut off not even shut off i could still hear it murmur in the background i could still hear some thoughts sometimes pop up which is your ego right your thoughts is your ego is your conscious brain but i it was like a background noise it wasn't me I was in a different place, in a place of rest and relaxation. Now, when I told this later to the person that, that did this with me, he was like, yeah, that is what awareness feels like. <laughs> so I don't know if it's the complete feeling of awareness, but that feeling is the permanent state of being for someone that is fully able to live in awareness. Their thoughts are just some murmuring in the background that they can turn off or choose or, or manipulate. It was the best feeling in the world. I'm not gonna lie, it was one of the best moments of my life. And I felt very light after. Now, two more things that I'm doing while I'm here in Bali. I'm doing some daily affirmations that I speak to myself at night that are facilitating me awareness. I can share these affirmations as well if people are interested. And another thing is healthy foods. I'm only eating a lot of vegetables and greens. I want to share with you also a little bit of the things that I've learned this week as I am trying to increase my awareness. In order to increase your levels of awareness, you need to not walk away from triggers. And when I'm talking about triggers, I'm talking about every single thing that annoys you, angers you, brings out anxiety in you whether it is social settings, whether it is the relationship with a specific person that is triggering you. Someone commented, I, when I was talking about making a video about triggers, someone commented, yeah, but sexual harassment people trigger me. I'm not talking about actively seeking things that annoy you. I'm talking about you going through your daily life and suddenly being overwhelmed by a feeling of anxiety, anger, fear, overwhelmment. You know, this just this pit in your stomach. We all know what that feels like. And we all probably have several experiences a day where we have a negative emotion come up. That is what I'm referring to when I'm saying a trigger. And a lot of the time, it is other people that are triggering us. Our parents, our relationships, our friends, our family, whoever it is in your life. It's the purpose of life to be triggered. We are all constantly being triggered. And you know why that is? It is because our triggers are our learning points. These are the most important indications of what we need to work on. And this is very important. And not a lot of people will understand this. So and it took me a while to understand as well. It is never about the other person when you're being triggered. 
stop pointing the finger, you know? And I'm speaking to myself now as well, so sorry if this sounds judgmental. I'm not meaning it in that way. But stop pointing the finger at the other person. Yeah, but the other person did this to me, but some per people need boundaries. But, you know, it is not about the other people. What if all of these people and experiences were put into your life in order for you to evolve? It is not about approving the other person's behavior. This is about understanding that our triggers are put in our life to help us evolve. Another thing that I'm thinking of now, I recently saw someone explain the law of attraction in a very different way as well, which is life can't only be good and only about manifesting our desires. There are cycles that we go through in manifestation. It is almost like a yin yang cycle, cycles that we go through in life even, which is, you know, there are good moments where we're on a high. And there are low moments where we experience a trigger or a negative emotion. Now we need to understand that this is the essential cycle to evolve. We need the moment of trigger. We need to see these moments of low, not as moments of low. These are moments of learning. Because in every trigger, in every negative emotion, there is something to learn. Now let me give you an example as well. Let's say there is something in a relationship happening and that other person is triggering you or not treating you right in a way. It is not about the other person. You have probably already experienced this same treatment from someone else before. This is about you are resonating with this type of treatment. You are manifesting this type of treatment into your life. And this is not about blaming anyone or saying that you are at fault for manifesting these experiences into your life. No, this is a very essential part of life, you know, going through these triggers because every trigger is like a mirror. It is trying to mirror something back to you. And in order to increase levels of awareness, we need to see every trigger, not as something exciting because it is never going to truly feel like that, or maybe it will at some point, but we have to see a trigger as, oh my God, what is there for me to learn? I'm being triggered right now. This situation, this social setting, or this person, or this relationship is triggering me, is making me anxious, is making me feel insecure. Why do I feel this way? When have I felt this before? In what other relationships do I feel this same trigger come up? Because if we don't do this, this trigger will just keep on repeating and repeating and manifesting in different people, in different situations. It is never about the other person's behavior. And if you're having a lot of trigger in a relationship with your parents, which is by the way, very common. Our parents are probably, for a lot of people, our biggest trigger points. That's literally why they were put in your life. To trigger you to some extent because then it is about okay why is this triggering me there is always an insecurity of you when you get triggered by another person let's say your mom is telling you to uh, she doesn't know what you're doing in your life and she doesn't agree with your job i don't know just an example and that really triggers you how could she say this that she doesn't understand okay why are you so insecure about it though why are you not certain about what you're doing? Why does it matter what she is saying, right? This is just an example. So what I really want you to take away from this, and, and I'm speaking to myself as well, I'm being a teacher again here, but I'm just as much of a student as you guys of life. We all are. Every trigger is a lesson. So instead of indulging in thoughts of blaming the other person, they shouldn't have treated me like that. How could they do this to me? They are so selfish. They are so this and this and that. Yeah, loop that goes on. Just completely turn it off and sw switch it around and think, what is there for me to learn? Why does this hurt me? Why does this trigger me? When have I felt this before? And do the inner work. Second important realization is a bit related to this is don't run away from emotions. Don't, and whenever a negative emotion arises, whenever we feel anxious or angry, we are so programmed to immediately seek a distraction. Maybe you're going to watch something. Maybe you're going on your phone. On your phone is so easy, just like to numb the negative emotion, right? Just grab your phone. I do it all the time. We all do it. Maybe even subconsciously, we grab our phone to distract ourselves. And if we want to reach higher levels of awareness, we have to do the scariest thing that is there, which is go deep 
in the emotions. Sit with it. Seek the pain. Close your eyes and feel the trigger in your whole body. Why does this hurt you? Where in your body is this hurting you? Really sitting with the emotion. And this, I don't think a lot of people do this. Maybe no one does this because I was never doing this truly. If there was a negative emotion, I was just like going on thought loops and then maybe seeking a distraction and wanting it to go away, but not truly sitting with it, truly feeling the sharp pain really sort of digging in that pain and seeing what, again, what there is for me to learn. Dedicate a whole meditation around this trigger or negative emotion. Now, the final thing is, I'm just going to read my journal, what I wrote about it. So what this is really about is like, you have to see your brain as if you're watching TV. When you're caught up in a thought spiral, you are watching a specific channel. And there are so many times when we really have to become aware with, of this. And this awareness grows when you meditate every day and when you do yoga every day. So this is a natural process. It's like, do you like the narrative that is going on? Uh, this week there was something that really angered me. Something someone did and it just made me really upset. And I noticed myself in my head scripting what I would say to this person. How could you do this to me? And I wasn't saying that to the person in, in real life. I was just s narrating it in my head constantly as a loop. And normally maybe I wouldn't e even have been aware of this, but now I realize and I'm like, wait, what am I doing? I'm ruining my whole own frequency by keep on repeating this narrative. I'm changing it. I'm looking at it and I'm changing it. I don't want to feel this way. I don't want to keep feeling angry. And instead, I will just decided to go back to me. What do I have to learn? Why is this triggering me so much, right? And also just change the narrative and see if you can say the opposite. Now, another example, maybe there is a specific thing that is really making you anxious, like a social setting or a presentation or something that you need to do. Become aware of the narrative that you're creating. Oh, well, they're probably not going to like it. Oh, what if this happens? Oh, what if I forget my words? Oh, what if this? Hold on. Let's step out of it and look at this narrative. What is this based on? Let's change it. Let's change it around. Let's swap it around. That presentation is going to go amazing. Everyone always loves when I speak. Everyone is inspired by my energy. Literally, artificially change the narrative. And this is a difficult process and I think it's easy for me to say catch the story but this will become easier and easier the more you meditate and the more aware you become but you really have to firstly understand is that every time there is a narrative going on in your brain that you don't like you have the capacity to literally just turn it around and say the opposite and start catching whenever you are spiraling on something negative and you're like wait actually am I liking the story that I'm creating here what would be the opposing story write it down maybe to imprint it deeper on your subconscious mind what would be the opposing narrative and how can I through repetition perhaps convince myself of this narrative because we create our reality we can literally swap things around shift our whole reality once we start changing the stories that we tell about our reality. And this is also a lot about constantly reminding yourself, okay, I was thinking now for a while, let's go back to awareness. Did I like what I was thinking? What stories was I telling myself? What channel was I on? Can I switch channels, right? Can I go to a different one? And whenever you find yourself spiraling on something that triggered you, instead of focusing all the energy on the other person that triggered you or the situation that triggered you or how unfair it is see what you can learn from this how can you grow from this how can you evolve from this what is the positive here not even the positive it, this is not about positive and negative this is about taking back the awareness of deciding what thoughts you want to be consuming what channels you want to watch and okay, the final thing that I want to add for this week is we also have to become very aware of our judgment, our judgment towards others and our judgment towards ourselves. I had to do this very special heart centered meditation one day and we had to stare each other in the eyes. You had to, the person closest to you, you had to stare each other in the eyes. And as I was doing it, I noticed how my brain just automatically was pointing out things about the way this person was looking. 
not say, it wasn't all negative i'm not saying that but it's just what my brain did and that, and that's when i catched it again my ego like what are you doing why are you forming judgments you don't even know this person right go back to love go back to just imagining sending love from your heart to theirs whatever they look like whoever they are and i just want to give you this example because if you say you don't judge other people you're a liar because if we really become aware of our brain, we are co constantly judging everyone, constantly. When we see people, we notice things about the way they look. Even even the, med the, the woman who did the meditation walked in and had blue hair. And I was like, oh, she has blue hair. I'm like, ego, well, why does it matter? <laughs> not that it was a negative thing. I'm not saying I was negative about it, but just in general, the judgment, right? We really need to become aware of it in order to grow and evolve. Now I'm gonna keep it at this. Also know that I have a very special manifestation identity shifting course. This is for the people who really want to transform their life in just a period of five weeks. And I'm guiding you do so with weekly teaching, daily practices, guided practices, daily journaling, and also my actual personal guidance through chat, where I can help you out to change your life in a period of five weeks. Link is in the description if that is something you're interested in. Leave a comment, leave a like, let me know what you think about everything that I've done this week so far. I, I'm really, really enjoying reading your comments about my way more personal videos these days. And I would love, love, love to see you in my next video. Sending my love.